805 Focus is brought to you in part by Nonprofit Connect. Nonprofit Connect provides superior leadership tools and resources so nonprofit leaders and board members can make valuable decisions to move their organization forward to a sustainable and vibrant future. More information on services online at nonprofitconnect.org. Welcome everyone to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Petra Bumer and Petra is with the Mindful Eating Institute. Welcome Petra. Thank you so much Cinder. Thanks for Glad being with to us be today. Here, yes. Yes, so mindful eating. I need to learn about that. I bet some of our listeners might also want to. So tell us about the Mindful Eating Institute. Yes. I'd like to share the story how I came about um, starting the Institute. I Good. used to be a very assertive weight loss coach. I'm a trained therapist by tra by, from Germany, master's degree in psychology, and taught weight loss in Santa Barbara for many years and realized that most of my clients would gain their weight back because something was missing. Mm. What do you think was missing? Uh, not paying attention, not being mindful. That's one, and also emotional eating was not addressed. Oh. Emotional eating means if somebody goes to the refrigerator late at night and is not physically hungry, what is that person in need of? Is mm. he or she hungry for comfort, to deal with stress or anxiety, or deal with life stressors. So that's where wow. I come in. My yeah. ideal client is somebody who is tired of dieting and says mm -hmm. there must be another way. I can see how that ties in with your psychology background. Yes. So in my work, I find it extremely important to teach people a new way to take care of themselves and not use food as a mood regulator. So when somebody is stressed, I ask, what is your heart hungry for? What are you really in need of right now? It's a never a quick fix. See, diets promise quick fixes, and they just don't work. I have evidence to prove that. I was passionate about it, but it really is an outdated approach, in my opinion. Gosh, so it's really about looking at the whole person rather than, oh, I want to lose a few pounds. There's never a cookie cutter recipe. You don't need to lose weight, but if you came to me, how I work with you would be very different from the next woman. Because wow. old programming plays a big role. If oh, somebody yes. gets a message as a seven-year-old girl, you're a little chubby, let's go to Weight Watchers. A lot of my clients struggle with that. So these old tapes are still running at age 50 or 60. It takes a while to undo that. So to help the person be mind, and typically when you think of mindful eating, you mm -hmm. might think of, oh, let me make sure I'm paying attention to what I'm putting in my mouth. But this is a different sort of perspective on being mindful. So I believe that when somebody comes to me for weight loss, it's like a pyramid, they want to lose the weight, but underneath is where the true work really lies. Yeah. So everybody is different, but I teach self-care, I teach mothering. Even for men who need comfort and nurturing in their stressful lives, you know, to take <clears throat> a break, a quick cocktail at night or some nuts, sure, takes the edge off, but what are they really in need of? Something else. Yeah. So you cannot lose weight without addressing the emotional eating part and being mindful of your true needs. So... When people come to you, how like do they come once a week? Is it all they different? They come once a week for a minimum of three months. Okay. And I highly recommend they also come to my group once a, oh. a week, Monday nights at the Family Therapy Institute. Now that's a group just for women right now, but that can change. Okay. So you get intensive one-on-one -on -one counseling with me plus group support once a week. That works Gosh. best. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's great. Now where is this uh, group? The Family Therapy Institute is on Arayaga Street, okay. 111 East Arayaga. It's a mm -hmm. cute old building and it's a nurturing env uh, environment. So that's what I do Monday nights. Um, 
I want people to understand that there is hope. I get a lot of clients who are really hopeless, very mm -hmm. overweight, and maybe the last option is to get bariatric surgery, uh -huh. but there is another way. I give talks at Cottage Hospital on the topic. Oh, I good. gave it at Psychiatric Grand Rounds. Doctors need to understand yes. that it's really a big deal. 70% of Americans are overweight or obese, so that's a large number. That is great that you're ed educating the doctors. I just got an email before I came tonight. To, I was invited to give a talk at New Beginnings and train oh, yes. their counselors. Uh -huh. So oh, good. I like to spread what I know and what I know works. And if it's okay, I'd like to share maybe two stories. I will not, of I'd course, love, give names. I'd love to hear them. Of a night nurse who worked at Cottage Hospital, was quite overweight, and all the diets had failed, and she came to me many years ago. What we tried with her is I asked, you're tired in the morning, you're empty, you're fired on all cylinders, you're probably in need of comfort. Let's try this. I said, do you have a beautiful shawl or a scarf? She said, I do. Do you like broth or tea? No, I don't like tea, broth. I said, let's try this. Next time you come home from a night shift, she boiled her water, made herself a beautiful bowl with broth, sat on the couch with a shawl, and that provided the nurturing and the comfort she needed. So that was one ritual that worked for her. So mm -hmm. I love creating rituals with clients. I have them keep a food mood journal to oh. not just write down calorie per calorie, but how am I feeling? I just had lunch. Why am I reaching for a Snickers bar? What is really going on? Mm. And talking to yourself as if you were a sweet little girl. I said, well, honey, you had enough. You know, what else could we do? Do you want to go play or go for a walk? Yeah. So you need to read. I'm, what I like about my work is I can tune in to the individual, and then we craft those new strategies and rituals. And it's never a quick fix. Gosh, and tailored to every person. Mm -hmm. And that's my passion. In some cases, it takes even a year, but that's a lifelong solution. You don't sure. want to go lose 30 pounds, gain 40, lose 40, gain 50. I've yeah. seen it happen over and over and over again. There's a lot of suffering going on, but there is a way out. That's why I started my own business. So how long ago was that? Over a year ago, okay. and I'm doing it full time. I used to work for Sansom Clinic for almost eight years and finally let go of the ledge and went out on my own because my soul was breaking through saying I need to help in a different way. Yeah. And I'm absolutely loving it. Good for you. Thank you. And yeah. another story that comes to mind, I'm sure a lot of our viewers are maybe very drawn or addicted even to sugar. And one of my clients could not drive by a certain bakery without getting a treat. And she kept saying, I need a treat. And I said, I get it. I completely understand that you do. But what you really need is a break. She had a stressful job, a sick husband at home. And so we came up with strategies for her to delegate more, not take every call from him. During our counseling session, he would call all the time. So oh, she gosh. needed to practice having good, healthy boundaries. So her need to go towards sugar to self-soothe diminished over time. Wow. Yes. And then she lost weight. She lost weight. So people in my program lose weight naturally. I can never predict when the shift occurs. It's not a linear process. But everybody says they're feeling better about themselves, more relaxed, less stressed. and. When you don't lean on food to feel better, then weight will become a, a beneficial side effect. That's how I see it. Wow. And it takes the stress out of dieting, worrying yeah. about calories. And I truly believe that diets further disconnect a person from internal cues. And we don't need more stress. If yeah. you're already overweight, you're beating yourself up. I know this. People are very hard on themselves. Yeah. And I'd like to mention one documentary for every woman or even every man to watch on body image. It's called um, Embrace. It's on Netflix. Oh. Yes. So that's a great um, film made by somebody who struggled with weight issues herself. And Embrace. Okay. Embrace, yes. And... Um, <clears throat> thinking what else I'd like to share. 
to mention that really each person is unique. We mm -hmm. talked about that. There is no cookie cutter recipe. There is no promise of a quick result. However, the goal is a lifelong solution mm -hmm. and not struggle with weight anymore. So when, so when I might ask you the question, um, how is your work different than other weight loss programs? That's kind of it right there. The big uh, difference is in my old life, when I was an assertive weight loss coach, people wanted to be in my class because I was a pretty tough cookie. I would hold them accountable, make sure they stayed on the diet. But I realized in the long term, 50% would gain weight back anyway. So the difference is I bring in the emotional eating piece, which I feel is the biggest one of all. It's a tool if you learn to navigate your emotions and ride them like a wave and not reach for food to feel better, that's the way out. So yes. there is hope. If anybody watches right now, I want to tell them there is hope. You can be at a healthy weight and it doesn't have to be stressful or restrictive or punitive even. Mm -hmm. Self-care is the way out of, wow. out of this cycle. And so I would ask you, um, you know, if you have some tips for us, but you've already given us several well, really good tip tips. Well, one tip is really um, don't eat while you watch TV. Oh. <laughs> Unplug from electronics. Be a mindful shopper. Take your time preparing a meal. Cooking for yourself is an act of self-care. And then while you eat, put the fork down in between bites. Ah. That slows things down and definitely not rushing or eating over the sink, really unplugging from electronics, practicing a mindful meal, lighting a candle, taking your time and making it special. Oh gosh. Mm -hmm. That sounds wonderful. Do it with a friend or for yourself. You don't yeah. know. You know? So. Gosh, and we're always so busy. Too busy, too rushed. So mindful eating really comes from mindfulness. And so we know Dr. John Kabat-Zinn came up with this when he started his pain clinic many, many years ago. Mindfulness is being present, being aware of this moment. And if we're present with our food, it tastes better. We slow it, slow the eating process down and have a healthier relationship with our meal. So it's complex, but mindfulness, um, I always start my group with a mini mindfulness meditation. We end with a meditation, and today in my individual session, I ended that session with a self-love meditation. And self-compassion and self-love are really the ingredients for mm -hmm. success rather than how many carbs did you have today. I don't care. Yeah. I don't count calories. I don't weigh, and I do go to hamburger habit once in a while. You know? <laughs> yeah. So there is no taboo food yeah. in my program. So a person can go on your website yes. and find out more about how to contact you? Or Absolutely, and I offer a free consultation oh, to good. see if we're a good fit. That's good. And so that gives people a lot of freedom to decide. I want them to feel safe and comfortable, but I know what I'm doing and I'm very, very passionate about it. Yes, I, love, I can see that. I love helping people, especially women. Yeah. We're so hard on ourselves. I used to work at the Golden Door. I don't know if you know this mm -hmm. resort mm -hmm. in San Diego recently, and they hired me as a self-care coach. I stood in front of 40 women and said, who's good at nurturing others? Every hand went up. Who's good at doing this for herself? Two hands. So we need, yeah. as women, to learn or relearn to mother ourselves. Oh, and gosh. food takes that role many, many cases. Yeah. Petra, what a fabulous message you have Well, thank us. you. Very inspiring. <laughs> I'm excited. Thank you yes. so much, Cinder. Thank you for being with us. Mm -hmm. And thanks for this good pioneering work of yours. Thank you so much. And thank you, everyone, for joining us on 805 Focus. And we'll see you next time.